We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Steve Ray, the familiar face, joins us in Mitch, but we've got Julie from the Dubai Max, the chair, no less. How are you, Julie? I'm very well, thanks, Steve. Nice Great. to see you, Mitch. Good to see and you. you. Too. Good to see you both. Great to have you on. Uh, Julie, you're going to uh, be grilled today. I'm joking aside. We're just going to ask you a few questions uh, and give you a chance to promote Dubai Max. It's uh, something we've heard lots about. We've uh, seen Mitch uh, post quite a few videos over the, the last couple of years, in particular. But um, it's got a great feel about it, Julie. How, how did it? How did it start out? So I'll go back a little bit first. I've, I've been in Dubai since 2009, and um, there was quite a, a group of us used to meet out in Centre Circle, which is not that far. Um, from the first bar that we we sort of built ourselves up from. And um, that was quite regular. We'd get sort of 20, 30 people in there. Um, and then I went off to Manila for a few years. And as I came back, it was COVID. So, of course, everyone was not really out and about. Um, but one of the guys, Neil... So Neil Blakel, one of our founder members, he moved into Barsha and conveniently over the road was a place called Brooklyn Bar. And Neil said, look, we've been in and asked these guys, have they got a football team who bases themselves here at the moment? Um, and so was no, look, if we can get around 20 to 30 people in here, um, can we get some discount? And there was a group of us on and off over the years. Like, how do we really get this going? How do we make this feel like home from home? Um, we're out here. We want to be the match, but you want to be with like-minded. You want to be with fellow Geordies. How on earth are we going to do this? So we started in this bar. Um, there was probably about eight of us to start with. And Dubai is very spread out, so people tend to get into their little clusters. And then they'll go to different places. But we wanted everyone together. And um, Carly, who's another one of our founder members, she randomly went out and bought some little Formula One flags, the little black and white Formula One flags, and put them on the tables. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. What a fantastic job that War Flags has done. And what an atmosphere. That really contributes to the atmosphere. And I thought, right, here's what we're going to do. We'll create a mini SG St. James's Park. So we want the flags. The pub let us play the pre-match music. So anything that St. James's were playing pre-match, we copied it. And um, so then videos start to go out. As, as you mentioned, Mitch um, was on the case. Uh, we had videos flying out everywhere. And then over that sort of, uh, it's really, we've had two full seasons there, but the, we just took over the place. Um, and we ended up with, uh, last season, by the end of last season, 
we were regularly getting between 100 and 150. We were getting tourists checking us out and, and coming to join us. Um, and we created an actual membership. So people felt like a bit of a belonging. Um, but as the nature of Dubai is you've got transitional people, but while you're here, you tend to socialize anyway. So it's really got a community spirit. And I think that's what's grabbed everyone's attention. This isn't a group of guys who get together, watch the match, um, get drunk, and that's it. We've got families, we've got events such as the end of season yacht party, which has become a big favorite. Um, we've had locals joining us. We've had people fly in from uh, Kuwait, um, uh, Bahrain, um, Qatar, uh, the Singapore guys have been a couple of times now and, you know, people from the other Emirates. So it's really got this feel of feeling part. And we all know St. James's Park, that's one of the draws, is you feel part of something. And that's that's really what was behind it. However, what we've got to now is completely unreal. So, so you've um, moved bars, haven't you? You've got a new, you've got a new beer yeah, this year. So, yeah, so phase two has now kind of gone a little crazy. So we got a little bit too big for Brooklyn Bar, to be fair. It was superb. It was a proper sports bar, screens on every wall, but the service was starting to struggle. And to fair, be fair to them, you know, you've got 150 Geordies, all want drink in a space of three hours, and they just couldn't keep up. Um, but for one of the games, I'll just, I don't know if you remember this one, Mitch, for the Sunderland game, the FA yeah. Cup game last season, we thought we we're just going to have to go to a bigger venue. So we searched around the area, knowing that that particular area of Dubai um, was convenient for people because people were managing to get there. So we ended up with, I think it was around 200, 180 it, to 200. It was, it was not the final figure was over 200, I think. It was like two, I think so, two yeah. Four, two or five, something like that for the <laughs> yeah, something London like that. game. It was mad. Yeah, so we took over the Rangers bar. It was actually the Rangers bar. And there we, we chatted to those guys and said, look, come on, we need a bigger venue. Is it okay to use this place? As a, as after that, as a follow-up of that, word got around Dubai, it's a very small place, that, oh, Dubai Mags are looking for a new bar. And one of our members, Glenn Hall, um, knows someone who works at the Malvern Pick in Jumeirah Lake Towers. And a lady, Axinia, is the marketing manager there. She um, said, look, come and talk to us at UBK, which is Urban Kitchen and Bar. They would be very, very interested. We don't have a football team here at the moment, but we'd really like to have you guys on board. And my goodness, the best way that some of the guys have described it is it's gone from being Mike Ashley to PIA. Um, they've rolled the red carpet out nothing's an issue with these guys um i'll touch on the membership in a second but they have put our items up on the wall it looks like a bespoke um decked out bar that was actually built for us rather than we've moved into it and people are absolutely loving it we had an introduction um brunch there to test the food and drink out introduce our members because we want people on board. We didn't want to lose um, that community spirit that we had built up. We didn't want to lose numbers. The one problem with Brooklyn, it was completely smoking. So people tended to back off with the kids. Um, in the first two meetups at UBK, we have signed 60 brand new members already. Um, paid membership is just under 200 at the moment. Facebook, I think our numbers are nearing 900. Um, so, as I say, the tourists do join us because, you know, being a Geordie, one of the first things you go, oh, we're, we're away when this match is on, let's look for somewhere to, um, to watch the match. So, um, yeah, it, it's got a massive, massive appeal to everyone. Um, and our memberships are um, an, an incredible price. Um, We've got for three and a half hours unlimited drinking um, and a main meal from our new Toon Legends menu. So we've got things such as 
Beardsley's butter chicken and Gaza's pre-match meal is pie and mash. <laughs> so we've got quite a cool little menu going, but it's only 199 dirhams. You're talking maybe 45 pounds-ish uh, for three and a half hours unlimited alcohol. It's a drinks only package. There's 20% if there's a la carte, 50% for kids off, off the special menu. We created prizes for people who contributed the most names to the menu. So we've had a lot of fun with it, building building it all up. Um, and our very first game, um, it was 100 people turned up just for the introduction, just to come and see the place. So we knew the, the figures were going to be good. And, you know, I spoke to the guys, Mitch is, Mitch is on our advisory board as well. And we said, no, wouldn't it be nice if we could hit the 200 figure before the end of the season? <laughs> uh, we had over 250 in there for the Southampton game and I just could not be prouder um, because this is people coming out enjoying themselves we've got a games area upstairs the kids can pop upstairs and play football pool there's there's just everything you could want a little garden type area so when the winter kicks in we've got a superb we, we took the whole of the ground floor over basically um, so yeah, we just can't wait for each match as it comes along. It's fantastic. It looks great. I've never been, obviously, but it looks absolutely fantastic. And um, you mentioned the end of the season, do which which looked wonderful. Um, I think we just said before we came on air, you know, it's slightly different doing it on the time uh, than it is <laughs> by a bit warmer. But um, great idea. I mean, how many did, how many did you have on the board? Uh, the first one is that we've got Captain Chris Bland, who's, um, again, one of our admin team. Um, if you have to call him by his full name or he gets upset. Um, so uh, he runs, he negotiates the yachts for us. The first one, I think we had 55 people on the yacht. Um, and then we had a bigger one last time. And I think that was 70 something, 70 to 80. Um, so obviously it depends on the size of the boat. Um, but yeah, we just, we, you just pay a fixed fee for a certain amount of time. We all take food and drink. And it's party time. It's like, just let's celebrate um, the season and how well the lads have done. Um, and now it's a thing. Like, we can't we can't not have one. We have one at Christmas, and then we have one at the end of the season. It was great. Great, the last one, we went past boats that were doing gender reveals. So a boat would be pink or a boat would be blue. And you see them look at me thinking, what the hell is black and white? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I mean, yeah, we... Go on. Sorry, Jean. No, no, we have. We, I mean, we we get some strange looks at times, but as I said, it's people who aren't Newcastle fans just get pulled into it. They just get pulled into this amazingly friendly, positive vibe. It's just Geordies being Geordies, and you just naturally attract people because of because of the vibe um, that's created. So brilliant, a lot of fun. Has there been a big increase since the takeover? Yes. The takeover was a huge driver because you know what it was like in the past. You'd watch the game and it was like, mm, shall I go out for it or shall I just sit at home so I can go straight to bed afterwards? Um, and there wasn't, there just wasn't the enthusiasm. And I think what happened was in the past, you'd have these smaller clusters and there was no drive. But towards the back end of the year is when we first went into Brooklyn after the takeover. So the October, November, the calendar year. Um, and then because people were excited again, because people had belief again, had hope again, that all came back and it was much, much easier to connect out to people. Yeah. You compare that from the spell between 210 that I mentioned at the beginning, all the way through to, you know, 1920, the, the willingness to, to do something a little different or the willingness to try something just wasn't really there. But it's just... Yeah, for sure that was a catalyst. For sure. And, and it must have been great, I guess, for the for the expats out there when Newcastle decided to have a warm weather trip to Dubai as well. Did they, did many of your members get a chance to get a bit up close and personal? Well, we tracked them down, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> 
<coughs> Sorry. Must be great though um, when, you, when you know when, to see them going out. I mean, we've seen them travel to Australia, we've seen them travel to Japan, seen them travel to Saudi. Obviously, we're going to go to Saudi, but for them to come and do some warm weather training in Dubai was, must have been great for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's all quite sort of behind closed doors in terms of the training element of it. But obviously, the guy, the guys are around town, and it becomes a bit of a game, especially with the kids. You know, oh, have you seen any players? And so. Again, um, we're hoping that it's not so closed doors at some point in the future. We actually are in touch with the club very regularly. I'm in touch with the support of liaison team and there are plans to do events um, directly with, with us as a fan group. Um, whereas sometimes the Dubai is more of a, a bit of a break for the players, I think, rather than full-on PR um a lot of interaction with fans, but we do we do see them around town, and they're always always really nice. So it's good. You, you mentioned the club. We ask everybody. I mean, you know, you've got you've got communication with them, which is very very important. What would what would you like from the club? Is there anything specific you would like from the club? Um, I think a lot of people just want recognition. Yeah, I mean that's the, we, we've been on several. I mean, I was at the Saudi event. I travelled to not. I was travelled to the fans in Australia for their annual event, not so much the Newcastle event at the end of last season. But I was in the US as well. I also did Japan. And, you know, the common things are access to tickets, which, you know, I've, I've got an NDA, so I can't say that much. However, there's a lot of progress being made with the club in terms of plans for official fan clubs. And obviously my particular um, part is the international fan base and we've got a huge network now Mitch again is is part of this um we're all on whatsapp and we're all discussing what can we do in terms of the club directly Japan was extremely good we sat with Darren Eels we sat with Michael off the um, advisory board and they're collecting um you know feedback and thoughts and they do that at every event and what we're starting to see, obviously, there's legal things, et cetera, that they need to go through. But access to tickets, access to Q&As, live ones, whether that's legends or current players, fans don't mind. You know, we just want to feel part of it. And yes, we've chosen to move away from home, but that doesn't mean you support the club any less. And it's it's that engagement that we spoke about. It's that feeling part of something um, and the communications are so much better. I mean, there's no way any of the things that have happened, um, Q&As, fans, you know, Shola does a lot of work on the... Etc. Are you okay? It's just popping yeah, up yeah. again there. That's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Shola, you were just talking about Shola doing a lot of work. Yeah, so there's, they really are making an effort. And I think that that reaches that makes you feel better to start with that the effort is there the communications are very very open you can pretty much ask uh any questions of the supporters and they are working and my understanding is that the official um international supporters should start very very soon for this season okay interesting stuff let's talk football um best player for you, Judy, ever? ever. Who is who is your favourite all-time leader? Beardsley, there's just not no. That's it for me. He, the guy, had everything. Um, obviously, we want Peter to come out here as well. We're working on that right now. Um, but yeah, for sure. I mean, yes, he's a goal scorer, but that guy could just get a ball off someone. He just seemed to have everything. Absolutely everything. You got a favourite Jordy, so that's good. And a Jordy, of course. Have you got a favourite yeah. match, Julie? Favourite match? Um. Well, I think uh, Hawaii Five All was obviously a big favourite. The Man United one. Um, PSG in the Champions League, absolutely incredible. Um, but my first game actually was uh, against Man City, and Peter Beardsley was a player, and he scored a hat trick at home. And it was the first game my dad took me and my brother. There was some half season tickets that year. And uh, Beardsley got a hat trick. One, I think it was 5 0. And I can just remember coming home to my dad, who's going, Did you enjoy it? I was, Oh, dad, isn't the crowd really funny? <laughs> and I was just absorbed. I was just fascinated by the crowd. The football was there. I played football myself from 
the age. There's only 18 months between me and my brother. So I played football all my life to my mid thirties. And I played for Whitley Bay ladies at, at one point. Um, but that one was superb. A lot of away game, good memories as well. I was at Liam O'Brien over the wall, um, Sunderland away, which was superb. Um, probably that was my favorite away game. And the yeah. home one was the, the Man United 5 0, just the satisfaction of it, really. You mentioned playing football yourself. I mean, the progress in a short space of time of the ladies' team, the women's team, must have been, must be, must be something that you, you're standing back admiring and probably wishing you, you, you could have still been pulling yeah. your boots down to have a game. I know, like if I could be bold next week, it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, people talk about it. I know um, Ian Wright's a, a bit. Um, a big supporter and yeah we had to pay subs every week etc etc but it's it's great it's good for the game um yeah and again um uh just touching on amanda stavely being female but also she's brought she just did so much and she is a huge part of this uh international network that's grown and and, and kick-started the atmosphere but the ladies clubs what she did there the academy and everything um no it's brilliant to see brilliant to you, see you read me mind because my next question was going to be about amanda and how much she'd done for you know bringing the women's game on at st james's park she you know she stepped down along with me and dad um you know would you like to see her come back in some capacity at some point any day any day um i think um you know she, her, her role is to to get the deal done. She's a finance person. Everyone understands that. But I think she got it as well. I think I had a lot of personal interaction and whatever details I told her, the next time I saw her, she never forgot. And that's someone who's engaged. You can't fake that. That's not PR. That's not saying the right thing on camera. Um, and that's what I particularly liked about her. And I think that was the biggest fear when people heard she was leaving you genuinely looked at Amanda and thought Newcastle United. And the people that I've spoken to out here as well, it's like, it's just that we've lost her personality. Nothing wrong with the people who are there. It's just Amanda had that way about her that made people feel special. So I would absolutely love to see her back in some capacity. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, amazing woman. Let's talk transfer window. Um, it's still open. Uh, this is going out. It's a pre-record, but it's going out on Saturday. Um, been lots of ins and outs. There may well have been some ins and outs by the time this goes out. But um, as we <laughs> to record this on Wednesday night, um, we're still chasing the centre half, and you know, still a lot of people I think would like to see a right winger come in. And we've also got you know players who would like to offload. What would you like to see happen in the remaining few days, Julie? Um, for me, if we could, I mean, I would have quite liked uh, Jared Bowen from West Ham. Um, Miggy, I think Miggy is restricted because of the one foot situation. Greatest respect to the lad. He's great. He gives it 100%. But once you've played a few seasons in the Premiership, defenders work you out, right? He's only going to go one way. He, he, he just... We need a right winger who's a right winger who can go in or out, if that makes sense. Um, not sure entirely who that might be, but um, I suppose the only person I would say, while we can get some money, probably Miggy. Um, the centre half, I think we're talking silly money now for Chris Palace. But is that just the market? I mean, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not overly disappointed, to be honest. Um, I like the new striker because I believe Eddie Howe will get the best. Look at what he did with Gordon. Gordon wasn't a superstar at Everton. He was like in and out, right? Um, and I just believe our coaching team are, are really, really good at getting these. And if he works with Wilson and Isaac, um, great. Um, but yeah, probably we need another centre half. I would say centre half and right wing would be the priority for me. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, Newcastle United take on Bournemouth and uh, this coming Sunday at 2 o'clock and it's live on Sky. All the away tickets have been sold. 1-1-0 um, last week. Just looking back on, on last week's game, uh, I mean, it wasn't the 4-5-0 the game that a lot of us were <laughs> more predicted. Yeah. But um, 
A win's a win, Julie. First of all, last week's game, how did you find that? Nervy, of course. However, for me, it was the spirit and like the the wanton, I mean, Sean Longstaff's tackle, I think, said it all. Um, but for me, it was the spirit. It was like, right, we're not lying down. We're up against it. And, you know, people argue that champions, we're well, not saying we're going to be champions, but they argue that champions battle out a 1-0 win, then good. If we've got that spirit in the team, great. Good for them. I, I mean, I was happy that how they fought. Thought that was, I mean, we got the three points as well on the first game of the season, so yeah, good. Yeah, so Bournemouth away, um, bit of a tricky place to go to. We, I think, when you start looking through the, the, the games that we've played, uh, I always feel like we've played them more in our history, but you go back <laughs> to the records and we haven't played them that many times in the league. Um, you yeah. know, first game 63 64. Um, you know, we're, we're, you know, you're talking about 10 11 games that we've actually played them in, in our history, but um. Obviously lost there last season. Uh, they've lost Solani to, to Spurs. Um, yes. He was our premises last season. But yeah. that, a 1-1 draw, 4-1 away win, 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two draws and another 1-0 win. So, you know, it's been a happy hunting ground Bournemouth in the past. Yeah, and, and obviously Eddie Howe going back there as well. Um, but for me, I'm pretty confident we'll win on Sunday. Um, you're right, Solanke... Yeah, bit of a nightmare to play against. And I still think that spirit from last weekend will push them on. And um, yeah, I, I think we'll win on on Sunday. And you'll be at the bar again. Um, Absolutely. Does Mitch drink as much as he says he drinks, Julie? He can, he can put it away, to be fair, Steve. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do the bar take and score the other thing that we've been lent to believe on this podcast is that when Stu Penman turns up the bar take and score <laughs> is that correct Julie? well it's it, yeah I think that the two of them are on a competition to be fair you can cross, that, cross check that at the weekend because he's over this weekend <laughs> is he? fantastic yeah yeah um, no no it, it's a lot of fun honestly and of course with the new deal right there's just We'll get a picture of the glasses um, that are lined up at the end of the three and a half hour period. You've seen nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, where can people find you, Julie? Give us give us a plug for your socials so that people can yeah, find sure. you. Yeah, sure. So, um, location wise for the pub, it's UBK. It's in Jumeirah Lake Towers. It's right next to the Morven Pick, just down the stairs at the Morven Pick. Um, right in the middle of Dubai, Marina End. Um, on Facebook, we have a very long name. It's Newcastle United Supporters Club, Dubai and UAE. Just so we can um, have our guys. Mitch, you have the Twitter account. I do. Uh, NUFC underscore fans underscore Dubai. And then my Instagram is Julie Dubai Mags. We put quite a lot of videos and information on there as well. So anyone can, can take a look at that. Fantastic. It certainly looks a very hospitable place. If, and if you don't mind me saying, Steve, oh, I, I've yeah. been here since, since Julie and Carly and Neil and James and Chris and everybody else got involved. For me, it's been a delight. And it, it, we're given a platform that, I, that I'm privileged to have and the social media following I have. I can now just direct traffic. Where we're watching the match, you're watching it there because everybody will be there. And the the atmosphere they've managed to foster and create um, is second to none. It's unlike anything else in Dubai. You know, oh, as it's you know, not, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I've I've told these guys about my experience of watching Leeds and Goodfellas with the Leeds lot, and it's just angry men throwing pint glasses at a television screen, basically. Um, I don't want that. And exactly, we we are family oriented, um, and it's it's such a special. Uh, thing to be part of, and I'm very, very proud of it. I'm very proud so of it be. worldwide, yeah. and it's uh, you know it's just great to be involved. We've got a, we've even got our own booking system now, Steve, because oh, yeah. we just got too much uh, wow. to take all of them. So uh, a very kind, uh, again, another member, Vic Patel, um, has uh, connections to a company called Tickment. 
and we have a link so people can book on the choose their smoke and non-smoke and adults kids choose the food package so it's pretty professional now um because with that it's easy that we get a qr code on the back of the membership cards you scan that it takes you straight to the site and then you can book yourself in uh so the bars see the numbers in advance as well which which is good Brilliant stuff. So the latest game, uh, if you are in Dubai, get yourself down to meet the Dubai Mags. Uh, you've heard the links. I'll stick the links below in the uh, video chat as well. Uh, but Mitch, quite stuff I've heard you on a programme, to be honest. Uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said Julie could talk. You certainly could. Julie, absolutely um, pleasure. Brian, <laughs> yeah, Brian you, you invite me to real. talk about football, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, make sure you check out the Buy Mags. Follow them on their uh, socials. And if you're out there, make sure you look up Julie and Mitch and the rest of the gang. Sounds like a great time. Thanks very much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. You can find their website at skipsandbins.com. Contact us, www.skipsandbins.com forward slash contact. Say hello to low-cost waste disposal with pay-as-you-go and contract waste management. A big thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk. Telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. They are the Travel and Tourism Award winners in 2024. Their website, www.unitedgrouptravel.com. Email, beverly.ugtl at gmail.com. Or telephone 01670 632 460. Or mobile 0791 666 4174. Just £30 per person deposit. There are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. A big thanks to Media Arts. You can find them at www.media-arts.co.uk. And don't forget, we are a podcast. You can find us on iTunes or Spotify or other podcast providers. If you want to help the channel grow, then hit the like button, the little thumb underneath the video. Click share and share to your social media. Or join the channel for as little as $1.99 a month. If you want to take out a one-off payment membership, go to nufcmatters.com and hit membership. And for a £25 fee, you get a scarf, a cup, a pen and a membership card. You can also put a smartphone over the top of this QR code. It'll take you straight there. And don't forget, we also help the food bank on this channel. NUFCFansFoodBank.co.uk is a website where you can make a virtual donation today. And don't forget, in aid of Dementia Matters, new, new, uh, there is a new Newcastle United fanzine, NUFC Matters fanzine. Four issues for £20. Uh, simply go to NewcastleLegends.com and you can order all four issues with all proceeds going to Dementia Matters.